Okay, you may. So uh, now that you understand that sometimes faith will bring you back to where you are, where is you? You were actually a mathematician before. <laughs> so uh, if I'm talking about your work, what is an a games analytics managers at the IOC like I when I first also read this title I I wasn't even sure is this a, a real job or is this a, a game characters <laughs> that's actually very true it's very true <clears throat> no so so it's 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 a very funny story um, so you you remember when we when we graduated um, the masters um, everyone kind of went their own ways and I never, like, it was interesting because I didn't grow up, um, Olympics was never that big in Tanzania. Um, it was football, like, you know, football is what attracted me to the FIFA Masters. So um, when this internship came up at the IOC at the time, I, I wasn't that interested by it, but I applied because I didn't have any job after graduating. And then when I got it, I was like, oh, I was like, okay, this is interesting. Let me, let me go to Switzerland and get some experience. Um, and I only, it was only a one-year internship at the time, so it wasn't guaranteed that I would stay. And uh, it was an internship in the knowledge management unit. So the, the main goal of this team is to help the future uh, organizing committees and the future cities learn about what it takes to organize the Olympic Games. And we have different programs within the team that helps with the, all these different um, elements about transferring knowledge from one organizing committee to the other. So I did the internship, it, was, it went really well, and then like, they decided to keep me on. And then um, at the time, this is when the, the IOC was going, undergoing a transformation from, they were trying to reduce the cost of, of hosting the games and simplify the games. And, uh, and we, we started collecting and analyzing more data around the games. And, uh, and, and basically they were looking for someone internally who could do this. And then they're like, oh, there's this guy, he's a mathematician. Why don't you just give it to him? So, <laughs> so it was one of those things like being at the right place at the right time. And, uh, and just because they're like, you're a mathematician, we're just gonna give you this. So over the years, I've been slowly working with since Rio, Pyeongchang, developing and then now now I would say my my title and my role as the games analytics manager is it's more to to um, first to to measure we, we're trying to measure and quantify all the different elements that it takes to organize the Olympic Games so that we fully understand um, what it takes both from a resources and a financial standpoint and then we need to sit, we need to analyze we need to analyze all this data and then provide insights to future organizing committees where they can simplify the operations. So whether it's in transport, whether it's in the venues or whether it's in um, accommodation or other services, we, we're providing uh, insights. So it's really trying to be more data-driven, uh, working with numbers to, to provide insights to future organizers. Um, but that also, it, it's, it's, you have to have the data, but then you have to have the context. And then when you combine the two, you can then uh, generate insights. So, so that's where the analytics comes in because it's you're interpreting the data and making it useful for someone to then make decisions. And, and that's really my role in a, in a very simple, simple way I can explain it now. It is very interesting how actually now the IOC is uh, investing in this um, knowledge transfer very seriously, right? Like this is, a, this is also a very good. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. No, it is. It is, and it, and it's something we we had to do because 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 um, it's we we have to make sure that the games become more and more sustainable, and the best way to do that, and because the games are always moving from city to city, you don't want each person to start all over again and reinventing the wheel. So one way to do that is to make sure there's that transfer of knowledge, but now also the data side of it. You also we also need to make sure that we're. We're trying to reduce cost and find efficiencies. Um, and one way to do that is to look at really statistically, like, like how did they plan? How did they budget? How did they scope? And, and how did they deliver? And what can the future organizers learn from that in terms of simplifying? Um, can you give me an example on how um, do you use the 
big data as the benefit for sports, I would say, like, you know, a case by case example, maybe one, two case that you're working on that you see, uh, uh, it can be seen clearly the benefit of it. Sure. So I'll give you an example, but, uh, but I wouldn't call it big data yet. Um, cause, uh, this is the example I'll give you. It's, 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 it was a, it was a very simple one, but, but, but maybe it will, it will illustrate the point. So, um, it was more on <clears throat> trying to understand the, um, so for example, one of, one of the interesting thing about the Olympics is, is we have this thing called, um, the, the, the we want to make sure that the fans, the stadiums are full, right? The stadiums have to be full with fans. That's one of the, the more attractive thing. But also, we also have some requirements where there's different stakeholders who have the seats that are reserved for them. Basically, it could be sponsors, it could be um, rights holders, um, athletes as well. And the challenge we had was those seats are reserved and people, the people who have those rights can go to those seats whenever they want. Um, but if they don't show up for whatever reason, the seats cannot be resold to the public because um, they're, they're reserved. And the problem we were having, and, and I see was getting a lot of criticism after London and Sochi, was that you were seeing the fan sections were full, but then these uh, accredited seats, we call them, were empty. So when we came in with Rio and Pyeongchang, what we, what we did was we, we, we started measuring how those seats are being used from every session, um, really trying to understand, okay, which ones are used, which ones are not. And from after the games, when we did the analysis and showed um, how much of those seats could have been sold and what that value was, it then really showed the, um, it, it showed future organizing committees that they need to switch. They need to, um, how do you say, uh, instead of putting too much focus on those seats, they need to find a way to um, um, make sure that those seats are not going um, to waste because there's a certain monetary value attached to that. So from the simple work that we did or just really making sure we're, that we're, we're measuring and we're capturing what's happening and then post games may, uh, presenting that in a very simple way and showing the, the value, we've, we've, we've been able to save, um, I forget the number, but, but quite, quite some substantial amount of seats that have been given back for, for sale for spectators for, for future games. So this is one, but now, now we're going deeper. So now we're now in, I would say post Tokyo would probably be moving more in the big data because now we're going to start measuring using some smart technology, um, understanding, for example, buses, cause but the transport operation of the games is quite a huge operation and, and the organizing committee has to deploy thousands of buses. And a lot of times these buses are running empty. So we're going to be able to capture um, each bus, how many people are in the bus through through sensors, um, and then yeah yeah, and then and then and then once we have a full mapping of all the bus operations and what the occupancy was, we can then work with the next organizing committees to better schedule or better come up with a with a plan that that um, best utilizes the buses because because that could save them millions of dollars. So. So I would say we're slowly going to transition to that, um, and that's just one example. But we're going to do that for for venues, for for the food, for and for many of the other services that are going to be provided. Because we want to make sure that things are delivered to the actual need, and they're not overscoped. And if you can reduce the overscoping as much as possible, then you can reduce the the cost. I love how how optimizations and um, uh, queuing theory become. Uh alive in sports you know how now data can can yes. actually change and shape the sports uh, industry do you think no for sure for sure and 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 this we see a lot a lot of it is being done actually um in in the u.s and american sports and they take they take most of it as well from like the disney m methodology because disney are quite good at at understanding um uh, as you said queuing theory and how that can lead to higher spend at the venues, because if people are spending less time um, waiting in line, they'll be more inclined to, to, to purchase stuff. But to do that, you need to make investments to, and you need to plan to how you're going to measure and collect that and how you're going to analyze that. And that's it's quite a big investment and a big transformation. So, And it's not easy. As I said, we're slowly trying to, to do that. 
um, and and it would be very hard, I would say, for for sports organization to do that. But eventually, I think everyone's going to do that because we, I think, in today's modern world, no one accepts waste. Um, and the more sustainable and the more um, efficient you can run your operations, the the better for everyone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what is actually the main requirement for um, hosting the Olympics right now? Like, uh, as you say, now it's changing, right, towards an efficiency as well. So, if there are three key things that you can mention, um, what will be the, uh, the the main requirement? Yeah. So, it's 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 a it's an interesting question, and actually, I wouldn't even say there is any main requirements per se um because we've as i said the ic has changed its approach um from having strict requirements to being more flexible um and working with cities to understand how the games can fit their vision and their context so um it's we've actually made quite a lot of good steps in this in this in the in this area and we have a team it's called uh, the, the candidate cities team that work they work with future cities and the way the way we work now is we actually as i said we don't have requirements but they would sit down with the city so let's say if, if jakarta wanted to host the games they would contact this team and this team would work with jakarta on a plan that would suit them so maybe let's say for argument's sake maybe the 2032 games maybe they're too soon for jakarta maybe i don't know but they would come up, okay, what's your vision? Where do you want to go in the 20 years? And maybe in 20 years' time is when Jakarta could host the game. So they could start um, having discussions with Jakarta and understanding, okay, how could the games potentially fit um, where the city wants to go? Because some of the big requirements, as you've put it, are, are around infrastructure, so, so like airports, roads, hotels, and all these things. Um, and And having those in place to 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 accommodate the 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 mega project which is the olympic games not every city can do that in eight years but eventually some cities could get there in a long time and even that's becoming more relaxed again because now you no longer need to have olympic games in one city you can spread it you can have it in multiple cities so i would say it really depends and it's now it's more of a dialogue it's more of a dialogue and it's more really understanding if the Olympics can fit the place that the vision of, of a country or a city and rather the city fitting into the Olympics. So it's the, the, the equation has been flipped now. Mm. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It depends also how much you can uh, use your data and knowledge to be then convince the IOC. <laughs> they run. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, yes, yeah. Sure. Thanks, thanks, Zumbe, for the explanations. Um, we're back to the uh, next segments after this one. Mm-hmm.